Hello, good morning, and thanks very much indeed for giving your time to come to what is going to be a very important day. I'm Digby Jones, and until just a few weeks ago, I was Minister of State for Trade and Investment in the Government. And, and I say this with great pride, I'm a Brummy through and through. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person today, but, and I'm not saying this for effect, it's absolutely true, Pat and I are on holiday in the Caribbean. And uh, as you're watching me and listening to this, we will um, hopefully still be asleep, I guess, but certainly waking up to another glorious Caribbean day. Uh, we're having a holiday after uh, 15 months in, uh, in office in which I went to 31 different countries in the job. I made 45 overseas ministerial visits, gave it everything I've got to bang the drum for UK PLC around the world in terms of stimulating trade and also at the same time attracting inward investment into our country. I knew before I started the job, and I, I know it now even more, that trade and investment is one of the great ways of bringing not only prosperity to countries, but also bringing peace. Because people in work, people with hope, people with aspiration, people with a future, they actually very rarely pick up a Kalashnikov to solve their problems. And I guess we in Britain have the privilege of being the most globally engaged country on earth. So we take it for granted, really, about trading and investment around the world. But not all countries do that. And some countries right now, in such a difficult economic time, they do tend to take the bat and ball home. They do tend to become protectionist, isolationist, pander to, uh, to rather nasty extreme voices. And I'm glad that our country doesn't do that. And so what we're here for today is to focus on a market, on a group of countries, on a place which can provide such enormous opportunities for what we do, and at the same time can strengthen the bonds of friendship that will lead to a peaceful world. Do you know Car the Caribbean isn't just about the, the sun and the, and, and the rum punch that Pat and I are enjoying right as you you listen to this. It's a thriving economy on many islands with such friendly people. IT opportunities, construction, agriculture, and also training. And you know, Britain's really good at training people around the world. Some of the, the great export successes and inward investment successes have been training companies in education. And, and across sectors, we can do that in the Caribbean. We can obviously at the same time not only trade, I mean at the moment it's about a billion pounds a year that we actually sell into the Caribbean, but also at the same time we can invest there. You see, in many ways we start ahead of the game. That's a good and a bad thing. Because of the natural historic bonds between our two peoples, we in a way start with an advantage of understanding each other, talking the same language, having the same ideas and in some ways common heroes. We both play cricket, but at the same time we have friends and we know each other back here as well. The downside of that, of course, is that we can take each other for granted. We can actually think, well, we don't have to try so hard because it'll happen anyway. Well, globalization, you know, my friends, doesn't take any prisoners. It opens up markets to everybody. And if you saw what the Chinese and what the Spanish are doing at the moment in the Caribbean with cheap loans, helping construct hotels, really putting in and, and hoping to get out big time, we must not take the Caribbean for granted as a market, nor must the Caribbean take us for granted as a place which will always have that natural bond to commercial advantage. So what I want to see out of today is stimulation of thought, questions of course, let's hope we can have some answers, and let's go out from today thinking of the Caribbean as a market in which we can sell not just the leisure, the sun, the rum punch, but also all of those other sectors at which Britain excels and where we can take around the world. And at the same time, let's work with our friends here in Birmingham, who come originally from the Caribbean, granddad or great granddad, or maybe just themselves. And let's use the friendship and use the connections here to actually make the most 
of the markets between us. Has it ever crossed your mind why it is that Birmingham has succeeded as one of the great European cities? One of those cities in the UK that is north of Watford and yet hasn't sat there saying, oh, gimme, 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 we're in trouble, but has always sorted itself out and driven on in difficult times, reconstructed itself in so many ways. Indeed, today, you're all in one of the great emblems of reconstruction on the grand urban scale. But how, has it ever crossed your mind how we did that when we didn't have the prime tool in 200 years ago to make that work, namely a river? If you look at all the other great cities, they all have a river, because a river was their communication, their transport, and indeed their sewage system. And yet, we never had one with respect to the River Ray, and yet we still made it. You know why? Because we have a reputation around the world, we had a reputation in Europe of being an open city. It was known that regardless of the colour of your skin, regardless of the god you worship, if you had a skill and you were prepared to work hard, then Birmingham was a place that would never discriminate, would always open up and always be a base and a home in which you and your family could get on. And out of that, through Victorian times and into the 20th century and now into the 21st, we have always turned people from other countries' talents to mutual advantage. Now today, we have the chance once again, not only to celebrate that talent, that reputation, we have the chance to turn it to commercial success with a group of islands who are our friends. A group of islands who feel very, so very connected that they look back with great pride this time. And I wear this with great pride. And the basis that so many from the Caribbean gave their lives in the Second World War so we could be free. I just wish some of the young people from Caribbean extraction who live in our city would wear this with pride as well because it was their granddads and great granddads who did lay down their lives for all of us. Now that bond and Gary Sobers and Viv Richards, Lance Gibbs and Rowan Canhai, Brian Lara down the road setting the world record. That bond and also the bond you know of just getting on and turning our talents to mutual advantage. That all together can make today a platform from which we can all succeed, from which we can take the credit crunch and the economic problems as an opportunity to look for chances where others ignore, to have confidence where others are scared, and to go out from here and do what business does around the world better than any other agent in society, make a difference. So thank you very much for listening. Have yourselves a great day, and I'm just going to enjoy the Bahamas in a way that I've enjoyed St. Lucia and Antigua and Granada and Jamaica and Barbados in the past. Look after yourselves and thanks for listening. Bye-bye.